Good afternoon, everyone. Tom Stewart here with Clean Business Today. I'm with my partner, Liz Trotter. Hello, Liz. Howdy. You got a different different angle today. If you're, I can't. I would. I won't be able to see your cat if uh, it gets up on the. Uh, I don't know why. It's my laptop, so something happens with my laptop. It's pointing straight at me. Huh. Okay. Yeah. I just, I There's my cat's ears. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, there you go. I'll 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 turn a little bit. Okay, here. We'll get, a, little we'll get a better view later. I'm I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I learned something today, guys. I, I want to share with you for uh, our Charleston branch. My uh, my my accounting manager called me up uh, midday today and said, "Hey, Tom, there's." A whole lot of money in the uh, operating account in Charleston. It looks like you got your PPP money, and I was like, "Wow, okay." I uh, wasn't expecting that for for multiple reasons because I know other people have gotten their PPP money. They went through a more of a formal closing process with their bank, where it was almost like you know financing a house or something. They were signing paperwork, contracts, and so on and so forth. And we really didn't do any of that, so we didn't even know it was coming. And secondly, uh, based on, you know, all good accounts, news accounts, they ran out of funding for the first round of, of PPP, uh, was it Wednesday night or, or, or Thursday morning? So, you know, who was expecting to get money today for PPP when they ran out of money last week? So I was able to get a hold of somebody at my bank and talk to them a little bit and learned, learned a couple of things that every bank is doing it differently. And in terms of, how they, they, they close and, 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 and disperse funds. And, you know, I bank with, uh, I guess they were the bank that was formerly known as BB and T they merged with SunTrust and now they're branding themselves as truest. And that's who, who we bank with in Charleston. So um, they explained that, uh, yeah, they have 10 days to close it, but their business process is just to kind of get as many through as they can. So as soon as they've got authorization to disperse the funds, they disperse it immediately. So it's just a surprise to most people. They try to call, but sometimes they don't get around to it. So I've got, I'm on the clock, I guess, for my eight weeks and we're doing some work, but not as much work as we would be doing if we'd known 10 days ago that we would have our PP money, PPP money today. So that's one thing that, that, that we're working on. The other thing that I learned is that depending upon where your PPP loan was in the process, that funds could have been allocated to it under the first tranche, under the first, first phase of the PPP funding, but you might not yet have them. So as it pertains to Charleston, some of the monies that were still floating around out there Wednesday, Tuesday, I don't know when, but before they ran out of money, well, was allocated to our loan request. So it was kind of like earmarked to come to, to, to Castle Keepers Charleston, but they hadn't dispersed it yet. So that was why we, we, we got it today. So if you're there thinking that, well, you're not going to get any of the PPP money from the first round, that maybe isn't necessarily true. There's a chance that maybe you had an allocation going to, to your application before they ran out of money. You just don't, uh, just don't know it yet. Yeah, I'm hoping that that's what's going to happen to me. I know at least one other person that happened to, too. She got her PPP money yesterday. So, exciting. Are you frozen, Tom? No, you were just really no, I'm reading, right? I'm just, I'm just, taking, I'm just <laughs> taking it all in, you know. It's uh, the, 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 the di dynamics. Um, I was trying to get caught up on the news here just before getting on the call, and uh, Steve Scalise, the... Uh, House Minority Whip, uh, one, of, one of the uh, House members that uh, is kind of in the know, uh, says that he's very confident that the uh, bill will pass the House tomorrow by a large vote. So um, by all accounts, there's going to be another uh, $310 billion, I think, coming into uh, the PPP funding, another $50 billion going to the EIDL. So, even if you didn't make the first wave, you got another another shot at it. There's a ton more money that's that well, being thrown into the system. Ernie is saying that he heard that the new money is supposed to run out in two to ten days. So let's just 
more more cool. information. All right. Yeah, I I guess that's possible because when the monies came out the first time, the banks didn't even really know how to process a loan, so it took them a while to ramp up. But it's my understanding that most banks have been working these loans since last uh, last Thursday when they quote unquote ran out, getting ready with the expectation that more money was coming. So when more money was there, they'd be able to get it out a lot faster. So it would be reasonable to assume that this uh, next uh, 310 billion will go a lot faster than the first 349 billion. Golly day, that's a lot of money. We're, talking, we're just talking about that type of money like it's, it's nothing, but that's hard to imagine. Good for okay, you. we have some questions here, Tom. Okay. Let's, let's get to a couple of these real quick. Um, Karen, you're welcome. We're happy to be doing this. We're enjoying ourselves as well. And it's forcing us to uh, relax, calm down, learn about stuff, and to stay on top of things. So it's really working out great for us, too. All right, Shannon says, a small business wants to hire me to clean his business before they open. He did get the PPP loan. My question is, can they use our service as part of the loan forgiveness portion? Also, I was thinking of invoicing them as a COVID-19 cleaning. That way they can take it off. What are your thoughts? For the PPP funds, 75% of it has to go towards payroll and payroll related expenses. 25% can go to certain identified operating expenses like rent, uh, I think like car notes, stuff like that, other debt obligations, maybe utility. Yeah. 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 That's kind of a gray area. I, I'm, I'm not, you know, that falls into that category of, gee, I'm not sure, you know, you could, could all argue that that's just like an on getting your 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 location cleaned. If that's a recurring on loan and going expense, maybe that's just kind of like a utility. It's necessary thing for you to do to, to conduct business. If it's a one off, maybe not. The other thing that the other thing that that, that I I do understand is that when it comes time to figure out how much of that loan is going to be forgiven that the bank that made the loan is going to be making that determination and they're going to be making that recommendation to the federal government. If the government doesn't doesn't agree with them, then the bank basically gets stuck in the middle. So the banks are going to be conservative in terms of saying, yeah, that, that, that's believable. Um, I don't know. That's a, that's an accountant question would, 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 would be the safest thing. I'm not even sure if your accountant knows though, because some of these rules are still being written. I wouldn't, I wouldn't promise the client that they would be able to write it off because we probably yeah. just don't know. And, and not as uh, payroll for sure. Um, so it would have to be the 25%. Yeah. So it, it's, I don't know. That's that's risky right there. I, I would, I, I'd be nervous about that one. Uh, Ernie wants us to uh, make a reminder for him, uh, or give a reminder for him that there is the Home Advisor webinar this Friday, April twenty fourth. Um, register, register on the CBT website. I don't know about the Home Advisor website. I mean, uh, webinar. Do you know what time it is, Tom? Do you have any details? Or anyone throw details out there? Uh, I know maybe maybe uh, Ernie could share share some details with us. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, we'll talk about them. Uh, Linda says a question for you, Tom. Once you fix your bank account number, remember you had that problem. You had a number wrong on your on your account number. Yes. How long did it take to get your idle? Do you remember? For that particular company, I don't think that we have gotten our idle. I haven't. As of as of last night, we had. And I haven't followed it closely. I'm pretty sure I, I would have been told if we had. So, uh, for that particular company, I don't think that that we have have gotten our idol yet. All right. So remember, Linda, that that's the deal. Uh, there are a lot of different companies. So uh, one company might have it. One company might not. That's what Tom was saying today. That 
he got the PPP for the Charleston branch. So not for the whole company, just for that one branch. Right. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, Dusty, you can't find the link. Go to moderncleaning.com. Go to the website and you'll be able to find the link to the test. Uh, today, um, for those of you that have not completed your COVID-19 training, Tom, today is the last day for sure. Is that correct? I'm, I'm, I'm afraid so. Okay. So last, there's no reason to be afraid. We've, we've done good. We got a lot of people through here. Uh, we are pushing it again. Anybody that hasn't taken it, get on there, take it, get your employees on. You got through the rest of the day today. I come dusty. Uh, let's see what else do we have on here. Uh, so Denise, uh, her suggestion to you, Shannon, is that she would invoice him and let him deal with it. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you get paid. And then getting a deposit would be a good idea. Yeah. Uh, oh, she says he didn't ask me if I would involve like that. I just thought maybe if I was hired for that reason, invoice them for that reason. It's just a question idea. She was just looking how to be helpful. All right, that sounds good. I mean, from, a, from a marketing standpoint, from a marketing standpoint, if you could verify that under certain circumstances, your service could go towards the PPP funds, you might get a lot more business. A lot of a lot of small businesses, you know. I might I might hire you at this point to clean my office because I've got PPP funds that I don't know what to do with at the moment. Yeah, I mean it's good thinking there, Shannon. Right? What if you found some cool? If you could find some nifty little way to make that work? I mean, wow. sounds like you could get a lot of business. Yeah. All right, Ernie's given the information. The webinar is lead gen during uncertain times. It is at let's see, um, eleven thirty Central, twelve thirty Eastern. Well, these are backwards here. All right, so we've got 9.30 Pacific, 10.30 Mountain, 11.30 Central, 12.30 Eastern. It's a free webinar, and I'm guessing that we just go to, where do we go for that, Ernie? You want to put that in there? you got a little link or something? And Tom posted the modernqueen.com website information for anybody that hasn't taken the COVID-19 test and hasn't taken the... Um, or watch the course either. All right, let's see. What else do we have here? Do you know what the terms are for the idle? Yes, the 30 year terms and 3.75. And you don't so, make your first uh, payment yeah. anywhere? Uh oh. Uh, a year. You have a year to make your first payment. So you'll never, that, never in your life will you get such a favorable loan. Uh, Yeah. So, once okay. so I actually, I, I wanted to say what I did was I included my cogs in the number that I gave, or I deducted it. Uh, I, I, what did I do? I did it backwards. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what I did. Anyway, I had to make an adjustment. So, but you have that option. You gave the phone number out yesterday about how to go in and ask for your Ask for your what, Tom? Ask what are we asking for, for your link to the portal. Yeah, link to your portal. And um, keep keep calling until they send you the link. Don't take the answers of, oh, yes, it's being processed right now. Or, oh, yeah, you're going to get an email in a couple of days. Just keep calling back until you get the link to your portal. Um, but they do give you an option in there. So if you did it wrong, like I did, you can uh, adjust if you want to. You don't have to, but you can. Um, Tom, can you speak to that at all about the COGS piece? Speak to, uh, I'm sorry, about what? Ab about the COGS. Uh oh, I'm, I'm lost. Where, well, we hear you. you. Okay. you just, we don't, can you hear me? Okay. We don't see you, though. Your camera? Okay. We'll see. There you go. You're okay. back. I'm back. Okay. Um. So. Yeah. There was a, okay. The application wanted you to break out your cogs from your other operating expenses, and your cogs are your variable costs. Basically, it's your payroll. It's like, 
you got revenue, the amount of money your customers pay you. And out of that, you've got expenses. And there's two types of expenses. You got your variable expense, which is typically your payroll is your, your huge part of that. That's what they mean when they say COGS. And then all the other stuff, your rent, your utilities, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, I guess the, the, the PPP basically is money primarily to go to payroll. But this idle loan, this EIDL, I think was in, originally, I think it was intended to help you with all those other expenses. Yeah, now, the other operating expenses. Things have changed and the formula, I think, is different than what we originally thought it would be. But I do know that breaking out your cost of goods sold from your other expenses, if you just say, well, this is my revenue and these are all my expenses and you throw them in one big bucket, then that, that puts you, you're not going to get maximum value out of the, um, out of the program. Okay. So, uh, I, I think I need caffeine or something because that just keeps bending my mind. Uh, because another thing that I heard was what we traditionally are calling cost of goods sold for the purposes of this loan, they're not. They're calling that cost of services, which is something different. And so they're not included in the way we would normally be including them. That, that's the information that I got, which is what I had to do that was a little bit different. Is it a different calculation so, than COGS? Yes, no, no, the way you calculate the COGS is still the same, but I need I need to get the details. I will have the exact information uh, for sure by our call tomorrow uh, because I'm I'm confused on, I'm confusing myself at this point. Um, I know we did have to go in and modify the money that or we didn't have to. We had the option to. We could go in and we could include our cogs in our expenses. We didn't have to take them out. We could include them in our expenses if we wanted, and we could get a higher loan. And my thinking was, when am I ever going to get a loan for this kind of money for 30 years at 3.75 with no payments for a year? So I want to get as much as I can. I can always pay it back, but I, I would go for as much as I could. So I'll get the details for everybody for tomorrow, but, but that's kind of the, the, the quick skinny on that. The, That's uh, why, Tom, we have a couple of friends that have a little bit more money than they might have gotten had they taken out the cogs. Okay. But they got more money? More money. Okay. Interesting. Yes. Yes, Debbie, I would agree. The whole thing is so confusing. It's getting less confusing as we're going forward, though, right? I mean, I feel like Feel like the PPP is pretty easy to understand now. I think we all understand about the ten thousand dollar advance on the loan that's going to turn into a grant. I feel like I feel like a lot is understandable now, even if we don't have the details about exactly how it's all going to work. Um, I was just talking with somebody today again about the FFCRA and small company. And she has somebody that has um, kids in daycare. And she said, hey, we're opening again tomorrow or Monday. And we'd like you guys to come back to work. And she said, no, I'm filing for the FFCRA. And the small business owner said, eh, no, I'm too small. It would impact our company negatively. So we, we will end up being exempt from that. And her question to me was, but how? <laughs> the answer to her is, I don't know. <laughs> that part's not written yet. So there is still a little bit of confusion, but <clears throat> but I think we're, we're getting there little by little as they write more stuff. Um, Debbie, a little. The PPP, I still don't understand what they consider a utility. Um, so I, I would think utilities would be the things that we typically consider utilities power, water, um, gas, Comcast, you know, your cable. Um, I think those would be the main ones. Um, 
Any other utilities you can think of, Tom? Uh, no, I think that's pretty much the, the gamut there. Um, gas, maybe, if, if you have that. But um, I, I believe, like, uh, standard uh, revolving, you know, like, you know, car notes, stuff like that would uh, would, would, would work, too. Maybe lease payments on vehicles. Maybe phones, too, yeah? Yeah, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would guess. I would try phones. You're gonna have to pay them anyway. I just noticed something here. I was uh, googling to see if I could find the uh, current formula for figuring out how much money somebody would get. And yeah. um, this is in Investopedia, and it says nearly. 8,000 businesses applying for uh, the idle loan were informed on April 21st that due to the SBA website glitch, detailed personal information from their accounts, including social security numbers, emails, addresses, may have been exposed. Ooh, wow. Yeah. So now we know the cost of this 30-year loan. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, uh, that's kind of a bummer. I didn't get that email. If you did, sorry about that. Uh, let's see. We have a couple of other questions on here. Let me check real quick. Shannon, um, can I go back? Oh, you absolutely can go and apply for both loans right now, Shannon. If you've changed your mind, you want to do it, apply for the PPP and you can apply for the idle. Absolutely. And I did say phone. I think phone might actually work. Your your phones might work, uh, Mary. Uh, I'm going with the intent of the loan versus the letter of the loan since the letters aren't actually written there. Um, internet, yep, internet. I would consider utility. We do um, on our P and L. Um, are there any restrictions on what the idle can be used for? There are some restrictions. Do you know what they are off the top of your head, Tom? But there are, Ginger. Yeah. You have to use it within your business. Take that money and go out and buy yourself a new car. And buy a Ferrari. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, there's you're supposed they're they're supposed to be asking you to prove that you can't borrow money anywhere else. I mean, it says it right here on their website. Um, it says you can't borrow it anywhere else, so, but it doesn't say you can't apply. You can right. Apply. I mean, it's, it's, it's just once you get a loan, you can't get another. It also says, I didn't know this, for loans above $25,000, general security interest and business assets can be used. So, I don't. I don't want to know of anybody that's been asked to guarantee any of any of it, but evidently yeah. that's the way the uh, the law is written. Shannon took a portion of her phone off taxes. Yep. Uh yeah. I'm. I'm thinking phones might work too. I don't know. Hey, Veronica. Just popped in there. Just saw you. Um, anything else you guys got going on with that? I, oh, I, I was going to ask you, Tom, if you had heard anything about this new stimulus and what you think about that, the one that they're proposing right now, I can't remember the name of it, uh, the $2,000 personal stimulus, $2,000 a month. Have you heard about that? Is that something that's going to be going to consumers? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's going to everybody. Um, it's, if this is this new two thousand dollar a month one is supposed to go to everyone, including the people that it didn't go to before, like students who were being um, um, claimed on their parents' tax returns, and uh, who are some of the other people? I can't remember some of the other people that that didn't get the twelve hundred bucks, but um, all of those people are supposed to be being included. Um, Right now, they've just been talking about it. It's been um, talked about for, I don't know, maybe a couple of weeks. I've been hearing rumors about it. But today, I saw it on maybe CNN, I think. So I was like, hmm, 
I wonder if it's going to actually come to be because that that's going to be um, that's going to be <laughs> it's going to make these times even crazier as yeah. if they're not already crazy yeah. enough. I don't know a lot about it, but there's uh, some speculation on the internet, but I don't think, I don't know. A one-time $1,200 check isn't going to cut it, said uh, one of our representatives. Americans need sustained cash infusions for the duration, yada, yada. The Emergency Money for the People Act is to provide 2000 a month to Americans who have been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, if passed by Congress. And this 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 came out like 20 hours ago, so this is new information. So it's, I guess it's 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 a bill that's floating around, but it hasn't uh, it hasn't passed Congress yet. And I do not believe it's part of the uh, legislation that the House is taking up tomorrow. Says so that. Uh, Americans uh, would be uh, eligible until employment returns to pre-COVID-19 levels. Holy cow. Or six months. Six yeah. months or right? Yeah. But I saw. These cash, these monthly cash payments would continue until the employment of the population ratio is greater than 60%. It's not income, so you're not having to pay taxes on it. Who knows? I don't know either. I was just wondering if you had uh, thought, seen it, heard about it, what you thought about it. I heard that uh, it's got a long way to go still, yeah. but just wondering how would that really impact our economy? I just feel like, ah, oh, that's almost a step backwards, not forward. You know, it's gonna make things even harder. <laughs> I was trying to get caught up on the news just before we, we, we jumped on this and the lead story is the big dust up that everybody's getting spun up about because the CDC is asking everybody to get a flu shot this fall when they come out because they're expecting a, a, a more aggressive strain of COVID-19 coming back in the winter and they don't want the hospitals having to deal with people with the flu and, and coronavirus at the same time. And people are trying to read the tea leaves, all the talking heads in terms of how much worse might it be this winter. And, you know, we're not out of this yet, I guess is the, 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 the long and the short of it, which it's going to pose challenges, but it can pose a ton of opportunities for us as well. So, you know, I guess the thing that it just reinforces to me now that, that that some states are starting to open up again and we're starting to feel like, well, maybe, you know, we're past the worst of it in terms of the peak, then, you know, for this round, for this moment, yeah. But like in Singapore, they started opening things up and now they have it worse now than they, they did the first time they had it. And that doesn't, you know, that doesn't guarantee anything other than there's still a lot of uncertainty out there. So we need to be be planning Part of our contingency planning needs to be things open up and we can think get back to things that look a little more normal in terms of the health aspect and, and, and consumers, you know, being being okay with that. Then we have to have contingency planning for what happens if the the virus picks up and, and, and it spikes again. And then we have to have contingency planning for what happens if the unemployment rate stays high for a long period of time and, and, and the economy slows down a lot and the demand for our business shifts. So, you know, golly day, we use the word unprecedented on a daily basis, but it is because, you know, it's, yeah. it's, plan, it's hard to plan for all of this. Yeah. And it's all kind of um, everything's so interwoven that it's hard to just, it's not one decision. It's multiple decisions. You got to make a whole bunch of micro decisions leading up to this bigger decision. So this stuff, I'm with, I'm with you, Leslie. <laughs> Holy moly. Right. Uh, yeah. Sarah, Sarah points out that her feeling is it's going to make it even harder to get people to come back to work, getting an additional two grand on top of the $600 a week, which is 2,400 on top of their unemployment. I'm like, ah, oh, 
So I, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, guys. Totally outside of our our um, sphere of control right now. So we want to keep it in our mind that it's out there, but let's not worry about it right now. We, we got we got enough stuff that we can worry about. Uh, we have another question here. <laughs> Andrew is asking about the PPP. Can we use those funds to train our staff and also pay a higher rate? We pay revenue share and cap out at a certain rate, um, but thought I would pay 25% above their normal rate. Yeah, absolutely, you can do that. Uh, that that's totally a, a, a legit thing to do, and a lot of people are doing that, especially if you're in a part of the country where you're still closed, right? And you have to use your PPP money. You gotta find some way to to use that. So one thing I wanted to throw out there. Oh, go ahead, Tom. You, know, you can you can you can you can definitely do that. That's within the rules. You're not gonna you're not gonna get in trouble to do that, but you need to look at the criteria for what numbers you have to hit in order to have that loan forgiven and turned into a grant. The the the, the only risk to that would be that you spend a lot of extra money for training thinking that it's going to be forgiven and then you don't hit the employment numbers at the end and you wind up having to pay some of that money back, then you might not have wanted to spend all that extra money on training if you knew that you were going to have to, have to pay it back. Yeah. So don't forget about that June 30th date, Andra. That is like huge. That's a critical piece of the PPP story. Um, also, unemployment ends when they get called back to work, doesn't it? Uh, not necessarily. If you are bringing people back to work and maybe you are still giving them reduced hours, um, their state unemployment may end or it could be some gap insurance that fills in there for state. Depends on your individual state. Um, but if they're not entirely working up to full time again, they may actually still be able to get the federal $600 a week. So you want to look into that because how, how it's being handed out is a little bit different in all the states. In, in, in a lot of states, at the very least, if they're making less than what their unemployment, weekly unemployment benefit was, then the state will make up the difference. And there's some math that you have to do and you have to kind of report wages every week. So there's a little bit of overhead as an employer to do that, but they'll still get some unemployment. And when they get that little bit of extra unemployment, they get the $600 on top of that. So for, for a lot of companies, that's the sweet spot. So the shared work program, Sarah, is different in each state. Contact your, um, whoever it is that you go through. For us, we have um, employment security is the name of our department. I think it, there's something like that. If you Google employment security in Phoenix, you, you should be able to find yours and find out exactly how to do it. For, for us, we don't have to apply or anything here in Washington. It just happens automatically. Just Google, how, just Google how do I apply for unemployment in Arizona and it'll give you a, a state agency and those are the guys you need to talk to. Yeah, you could even Google, I mean, shared work program in Phoenix, right? And you're, you're going to get something. Uh, let's see. If the individual is at least one dollar bundling, but the claim with the claimant will receive the full. Yeah, so Karen is um, pointing out about the $600 goes to all the people that are getting even one dollar. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to point something out and I totally forgot what it was. Oh, this is something I don't think that we've talked about before. Actually, Ernie brought up something too. Um, you're paying taxes on your $1,200 uh, stimulus check. So if if you didn't know that, if you're wondering why you didn't get the whole 1200 that's why. And then the thing I wanted to bring up that I hadn't heard talked about yet was for anybody that is having uh, payroll deductions done on an employee, maybe they, you know, you guys get those where uh, government is garnishing their wages no garnishments are going out right now. So, and, and that I think is a state by state, but check, um, it, it could be federal. I heard that it was all states, but you know, I'm not an attorney. I, I know it's true in Washington state, no garnishments, can't garnish anybody's wages right now. Makes sense to me that you're not gonna be able to garnish wages anywhere, but definitely check. 
Looks like Ginger's got a comment here that I know. Those seniors are making out like bandits on shared work program. Yeah, yeah they are. Mm -hmm. If if the numbers work out right and your level of work is such where 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 you can get everybody in that slot, I mean that's kind of like a once in a lifetime win win. All right, one more thing I want to talk about with the PPP that we haven't talked a ton about. We talked a little bit about it. You're putting people to work, you guys, and you need to be able to have the, the same amount of people, the same amount of hours, right? You need to have everybody working. If you're closed, look at ways that you can still, if you can't generate income, how can you generate goodwill? Because goodwill can translate into income when you open back up again. So I know everybody's talking about training. That's the, you know, 95% of people are saying, I'm gonna do training, I'm doing training, great. Not saying don't do training and don't forget our free training on here. Make sure all your people take that today because tomorrow it's not free. But not just training, you guys. What else can you do? How can you have your people doing something that can garner goodwill and immunity? There are lots of different ideas. Um, can you write thank you cards to all of your past clients? Can you, what, what can you do? A lot of the ideas that I have, that my best ideas come out of my mastermind accountability group, so I can't share them, but I really want to. So I want you guys to think, think broader, think wider, think bigger. What, what things can you do that make your name known in your community? Maybe people don't know who you are right now. Maybe you're a smaller company. There are things you can do that people will know you. Right now, that, that's not going to mean anything to you. But in six months, you're going to see money coming in from that. So start thinking about those kinds of things. Um, California, I have a very sad employee story about this. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that is a bummer. Um, Ernie's leaving. Bye, Ernie. Thanks for that info. Uh, Liz, regarding PPP, does that end the end of June no matter when you receive your funds or is it for eight weeks only? All right, so the June 30th date is the date that you have to have your, your people and your um, um, wages back up to where they were. And it's more people. So the, that FTE number, right? You have to have that number up to where it was when you applied. So that's your um, June 30th date. You do have eight weeks from the time it's funded to spend the money. But, you know, we haven't really talked about um, as we get closer to that June 30th date, Tom, do you know, like, if you get your PPP funded, let's say you get it funded on May 15th, and there aren't eight weeks until June 30th. Do we know what's going to happen there? Is the money still it's, going to Yeah. It, it's my understanding that the eight weeks is the eight weeks. If you get funded in the middle of May, you still have eight weeks to use it. Um, so that's nice. There's a, there's, I mean, we've talked about the, the uncertainty of, of, of what happens on July 1st. You know, how long does everybody have to be employed after June 30th? And we talked like the other week, isn't there some thought that some of those regs are, are, are being fleshed out in a way where you just can't let everybody go the day after? That's what Ginger's asking about right now. Yeah. yeah. But don't we don't have the answer yet. Yeah. There, there's, been, there, there's, there's been discussions from lawmakers saying that we shouldn't allow that to happen. But, you know, this... Those rules, those rules haven't been, don't seem to have been written or, or, or clearly communicated yet. We don't know. But because they're having a lot of discussion about it, I'm thinking they're not going to let us just let everybody go on July 1st and put them all back on unemployment. There's been a lot of discussion about it. So I'd say you need to plan on minimum keeping those people for two weeks just to keep yourself safe. But it would be interesting to see what are the rules? Do they just say, well, you got to keep people working for X amount of time or you're going to have to pay money back or are they going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to make a bunch of stuff up. 
none of the, I don't know none of this, but it's possible that they could come yeah. back and say, okay, we're going to give you extra tax credits or some other goodies. If you, you know, uh, you know, we're going to send you a box of candy if you keep everybody working for another X number of weeks. I mean, we're kind of in a cycle now where, you know, everything's every, nothing happens unless there's some government incentive tied to it. So I don't know how this is going to end. This is this is a really, really interesting ride. And, and the weird thing is, like, Ginger, you were thinking at least one quarter, because that's kind of a logical assumption, right? Me too. I'm thinking, like, at least a month and probably a quarter. But what have you seen that's logical right now <laughs> is the <laughs> – go ahead, Tom. Well, well, think about some of the discussion that we've had here previously, though. It's like, okay. gee, I don't sure. have a lot of work, but if I just train everybody really thoroughly for eight weeks, then I'm going to be good. Then, okay, well, gee, I, you got to keep those people working from eight weeks up to June 30th. And say you, you line up where you're able to meet that, but yeah. you're not generating any revenue. It's going to be painful continuing to pay people for, for not generating revenue. So, you can really get yourself in trouble. And I, I, you know, I'm not saying don't do this, but just be mindful of how it might turn out with, with, with some of the uncertainty. It's, it's, there's risk involved. It's yeah, paying, absolutely risk. Paying people, yeah. paying people who aren't generating revenue. I mean, if you're going to do, be, be, if you're going to be paying for the training anyway, heck yeah, go for it. But if you're, doing all kinds of extra training where your only incentive for doing it is to spend the money. That's that, 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 that has the potential of ending badly. Yeah. That has a potential of blowing up in your face there. Um, Andrew, absolutely. You can um, generate income. The more, the better. <laughs> absolutely. That that's the goal right there. The only reason we're talking about not generating, income is for the companies that are completely shut down and there are some companies that are, are completely shut down if because um, uh, go ahead Tom. oh gee whiz if you're fortunate enough to be at full operation and have you know all your people working and you get this ppp money you know the amount of the amount of profit you're going to be making basically every Typically, every dollar that comes into your business, half of it goes to cover payroll, right? Give or take, roughly. Well, none of it's going to cover payroll because PPP is covering payroll. So you're going to be making twice as much money per house if you're fortunate enough to be at full capacity. So the art to this is, you know, get your P try to hold off getting your PPP money until you're busy. And once you get your PPP money, try to clean as many homes as you can for, 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 for money. I mean, that's the perfect place to be. Or buildings or anything else that needs cleaning, you know, think outside the box. What else can you clean? What else needs cleaning? Clean that. Cause whatever you can do to generate revenue, well, to use Leslie's turn of phrase, we're going to make out like bandits. <laughs> if we can get our people fully working and we have everybody back up to our correct numbers by June 30th, if we were generating income that whole entire time, mm -hmm. yeah, but that's a trick, you know? So that's a trick. Yeah, I'm sorry, Leslie, 90% shut down. Tom, what, Charleston, 90% shut down? A little bit less now, maybe? We're not doing any residential. You know, we, we kind of got a weird mix here in Charleston. We do a lot of we do a lot of work for uh, some of the military bases and the military never shuts down. Um, and we do some, some property management work that that's necessary, but we're starting, we're starting to crank back up. We started, we started doing some residential work in Charleston this way and, and, and in Greenville as well. Um, Atlanta is supposed to be lifting some of its restrictions on Friday and going into next week. So, we're looking to uh, start scheduling some work next week in Atlanta too. Yay, that's that's good to hear. Really good to hear. So good, Wendy, I'm glad that these um, lives have been helpful. They've been helpful for us as well, especially since things keep changing. 
Uh, we know that there's some stuff that's supposed to be coming out on Tuesday. I heard that some of the new regs should be written by Tuesday, on Tuesday. I'm not sure. There's a Tuesday stamp on some of the, the details of, uh, ooh, and I'm not sure if it's around the PPP. I think it is around the PPP. Yeah, so that is going to be really nice. I'm kind of keeping my fingers crossed for what comes to us on Tuesday. Was that uh, date? Mary. Was that date set by the same people who said that we were going to get the emergency EIDL monies three days after applying? In three days. Uh, I don't know, but actually, I think I got that information the same time that I got the information that the Fed money was going to start coming in this week, and we have seen that happen. So that's that's encouraging. Uh, Mary, do employees have to be working in the same business? Or can we start um, ADF another business? Um, when you say business, I'm assuming you, you mean company, company name. Yeah, like I'm assuming you mean industry, a different doing doing generating revenue a different way. Say they have to be working with the same employer ID number, the same corporation that got the PPP funds, but. You know, if you're going to diversify from, say, cleaning homes and start, you know, delivering food or walking dogs or whatever, as long as you're doing it under the same uh, employer ID number, I think you're good. You would be good for that. So that would be great. That's a great thing to do. You know, that's what people are talking about when they're talking about pivoting, right? What What else can you do? What can you do different? You know, how how can you? Again, get some revenue rolling in. Uh, so, 2.53, Tom. It's a little bit earlier, but can you post than we normally do? We usually hit 2.55, but I thought maybe you could post the link to CBT today. So, anybody that isn't signed up for CBT, please do that. I thought maybe I could get you to post uh, Modern Cleaning so that people could also like that page, Tom and see that we also need some help getting the modern cleaning page get some likes so if you guys are uh, able to do that would be super hot oh helpful yeah audra um pressure washing absolutely that's very and it's good timing for pressure washing too right a lot of people need pressure washing right now we got closed down right at the end of uh march so a lot of people are behind on their pressure washing so bam more work. One thing they're not going to need. So this is something that somebody else pointed out to me. Uh, I guess it was yesterday. And I had not thought about at all. What about the poor landscapers and gardeners? Nobody needs them anymore. Not because they're shut down, but because everybody's at home doing all of their own work. How many people are at home doing their own yards? I mean, you drive down the street and you can pretty much see essential business, no, essential worker, <laughs> no, <laughs> because the yards are so crazy. So those poor guys are in a, 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 a funkier kind of a position where I, I guess it's similar to us where we're open, but people don't want us to come into their home. I mean, I guess now they do. Everybody's starting to open up. I'm, I'm wondering if everybody is seeing that thing. Everybody's getting a little bit desperate now. They're like, when can you come? When can you come to clean? Uh, some of our weekly clients never really wanted to shut down. But a lot of the other clients really, really did. They're like, nope, we want to shelter in place or, you know, stay at home, stay safe. Oh, good. That's great, Tom. So is that the, that's the website, though, right? Yeah, this is, this is Modern Cleaning. <laughs> you can go to moderncleaning.com. You can get to... The two classes and the test. And it's there now. Um, it's not going to be there forever. Um, be last day, you guys. So you guys, if you guys haven't uh, done this and taken the uh, test yet and gotten your certificate of completion, we're really, we're really running out of time before we, we have to, to go ahead and Liz is making me do it, guys. 
<laughs> so there's no Craig. He's already posted it before, but he's showing it on the screen right now. Moderncleaning.com. You go to the website. No. Um, um, Wendy, my son is laid off in pressure washing my driveway with his new tool because he's bored and needs something to do. <laughs> oh, no. So one thing about any of these things that you guys are doing, remember that almost all of them need practice and training. Pressure washing, I have really seen people mess up some driveways and some concrete not doing it correctly so don't just get yourself a little pressure washer go out there and and start trying to do it for people that are, have been having it done already they may not be happy you know, get yourself a little bit of practice there oh good Sarah people are still using landscaper there that's awesome um, oh Linda says one somebody hasn't gotten their certificate with her Tom um, she got noticed that she passed, but she didn't get her certificate. Oh, she can log in, right? Yeah, you can log in and, and, and download it. Yeah, so log in, uh, Linda. Um, have that girl log in. Did you say girl? A, a lady, yeah. Have her log in. And then there is a, a, a button to download now. Yep. So she can download. So uh, when you when you're watching the videos we're streaming them at the moment off of the uh modern cleaning youtube site and if you want to subscribe to this i mean we'll be posting more more uh learning information on here as time goes on but uh you know you can you can help us out there and the other thing i want to show you is cleaning business today this is the cleaning business today uh website you can subscribe to our newsletter here. Here's some articles that, that we have on coronavirus and the resources that we've been sharing are on a kind of a hidden link coronavirus downloads. We uh, I guess here's the here's the event that just popped up that Ernie was talking about for for Friday at eleven thirty central time. Um so any of the downloads, any of the articles, any of the stuff that we've uh, gone over here the last uh, several weeks, you can get it there. Are the videos in there, Tom? Um, the, well, da, 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 mm, no, but the video, all the videos are on the, bump, 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 here are training videos and I also posted something in the Facebook group that uh, had some links to the hand washing and some of the other other stuff. So some, the of, modern some, of, some, of, some of the videos I do believe are, 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 are in the CBT like the hand washing and some of that I do think is there. I had a couple of people ask me about the bed making videos again today. Oh, that's so uh, let's right. hear that's here on YouTube. And that's going to they're on YouTube. Okay. That's and, the, and, and it's the modern cleaning page. Yeah. yeah. YouTube.com okay. um, forward slash modern cleaning. Okay. No. And also we did add another video. We didn't show this one in the, um, in the, uh, the presentation, yeah. the class. It's here about, though. We've got, we did the, the presentation we showed two people making a bed. Uh, Heather Canning helped us out, and went back and shot another showing how to hygienically remove bed linens with just one person. And if you notice, two people can do it in a minute and 18 seconds, but one person takes two minutes and 12 seconds. So, you know. But it doesn't not. But not twice as long. Isn't that interesting? Right? Not, not twice, twice as long. Right. Maybe, um, maybe so, she's been uh, practicing, so maybe she got more proficient by then. Yeah, she got she got better at it. Well, when you're doing it with one person, it's a little bit different strategy because you slide versus roll. When you're using two people, you roll. Um, Leslie, um, um, yes, Tom is still doing the magazine. That was the link that he just showed, the cleaning business today. That's the magazine. I didn't um, post and that, did I? I'm a, I'm a slacker. You didn't post it. You just showed a picture of it. Don't yeah. post it right now. We just had our seventh year anniversary at the beginning of April for cleaning business today. 
I'm oh, fine yeah. when you're having fun. But I just posted just the link that. to get to the resource page. Um, I had something here I wanted to share. You Leo, know what? Would you share quick? You, you see this? Yeah, it's little though. Okay, that's much better. Okay. Well, if we're out of time, we can look at this tomorrow because this is really awesome. I think that this will be insightful, but we'll, this will uh, be, we'll, we'll open up with this tomorrow. How about that? If you want to know what okay. this is, come back tomorrow. But, but you need to know this. It has something to do with what happens when you've got good uh, ability to trace uh, how the virus spreads. And, you know, for, the, for those of us cleaning in a COVID-19 world, it would, uh, it's kind of stuff that we need to know. Oh, that's great. I'd love to see some updated stats too, Tom, on, you know, how are we flattening the curve? Is is it, are there any places that are still hot? I'm, I know New York is still struggling. If you had any new stats for us, that, that would be awesome. Okay. So we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll go over some numbers tomorrow. Don't okay, never, that'd have be great. To, never have to twist my arm to go over numbers. That's the truth right there. Uh, Leslie, um, so you have to be getting the magazine? Huh. Um, I don't know. We'll go back in and re-sign up again, Leslie. Yeah, just, just uh, sign up for the newsletter, and, and you'll you'll be back in the loop. Um, right. we're, working, we're working on our uh, professional house cleaner training program, and uh, – we're, we're going to have more more news coming out about that in the days ahead, but uh, we're, we're excited about that. And um, we're, we're, we think that we'll have something that uh, that will be really useful for us next week. Okay. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. And good to, good to see you guys. We'll see you all tomorrow. Hit Take me up care. on uh, my Facebook page if you have any questions or hit me up on Messenger. See you right. tomorrow at 5. Bye, Bye guys.